Hello YouTube, welcome back to the uh, conservatory. Now all the wiring has been finished uh, from the previous video so in a second I'm going to go and grab the camera and we'll just have a quick look at it all neatly cable tied in place and looking at it better than it did beforehand. Uh, but in today's video we're, we're going to look at refitting the carbs and the airbox and all things fuel related. So talking of things fuel related, you can possibly see behind me is the fuel tank that sat out enjoying the sunny weather and the, the final coat of gloss white is, is currently drying. It's, it's not turned out too bad considering it was just done with, uh, with Pound Shop Aerosol. Um, now the reason I use Pound Shop Aerosol is they used to do a version and it was actually um, cellulose based which means it stands a better chance of being fuel resistant than the, the stuff you get from Halfords or most other places which are acrylic based. The, the only problem is I, I had three cans that I bought a while back and I only just had enough to do the tank. Um, it's not perfect by, by any stretch of the imagination but it doesn't look too bad, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it. So let me, let me go and grab the camera and we'll just have a quick look over the wiring before we, we move on to carbs, air boxes and all the other stuff. Okay, so up starting from the front, you can see everything is cabled up, all in place. And then we move round inside here and you can see the main cable running through all nice shiny new connectors lots of cable ties just holding everything where it should be come back to the battery and I do need to actually get some red tape on this terminal just to make it absolutely clear that it's the positive one um, because you know how it is I did put a little minus symbol on there but uh, yeah, like I said I didn't have a red cover left I had a black one but we need to denote that. This little connector here is actually um, for the rain light so that's actually fitted to the tail unit which means you will need to unplug it every time you remove the tail unit and then we've got the CDI and the speedo uh, replacement or eliminator. So moving back on let's just have a quick look. There you, are. you can see the fuel tank glowing nicely in the sun like I said, it hasn't turned out too bad, all things considered. So, back to the workbench, and you can see we're going to start playing with this little knot. So give me a second to reset the camera, and we'll start again. Okay, here we are back at the, the little workbench. And the first job I've done is I've taken the actual plate that bolts on the back of the carbs, holds the inlet rubbers. I've given that a good clean up. I haven't gone too mad, you can see this. I've not polished it. There's not really much point. I've also gone round and cleaned inside here. Um, as you can see from this one, there are some remnants of some, some gasket sealant of some sort. So I'm just gonna just rub around with the wire brush just to get rid of the residue. Obviously a wire brush, not a steel one because you don't want to scratch all the surface. And that should ensure now that we get a nice good seal with the, the actual rubbers. Oh, it's a stubborn little bit there. Like I said, this is all going to be hidden from view, so I haven't worried too much about the, the tarnishing that's on there. Didn't really see the point. The other thing I need to clean up is the, the fuel tap. Um, as you can see, this is it's pretty gunky. Um, obviously, at some point, there's been a bit of a fuel leak down through here, which brings me to something I should have mentioned in the carb rebuild video. Inside here is the sealing O-ring, and it's, it's one of these. Uh, obviously, I bought five of them because I tend to get through them quite a bit. But you can actually get these replacement o-rings from the same company that supplies the, the carb kits so while you're ordering your carb kit it's well worth ordering um, a replacement o-ring for the, uh, the fuel tap they do go hard over time uh, and they do leak as you can see from this 
So first thing I'm going to do with the fuel tap is just pull out the filter. Now invariably they end up a little bit twisted but that's not the end of the world and then we just need to take the fuel tap off. Now inside here there is a, a small Phillips headed screw. It's a bit of a pig to get to and it's one of those things if you're not careful you end up losing it. And it just pops off like that. There's the, the actual screw itself. So this is going to get a, a dunk and a good scrub. But to be honest, I'm going to leave that just to soak for a while. And uh, I'll do all that off camera a bit later on. Because let's be honest, who wants to watch me scrubbing parts again? Right. So here is the, the base plate for the, the air box and that bolts onto the top of the carbs. So that bolts, bolts on like so. But obviously, like so. on like so. Now obviously it doesn't really fit that well at the moment because we need to put the inlet trumpets back in. So here are my four inlet trumpets and as you can see I've gone for the HRC short very extremely short outer ones and the longer in, inner ones. Now you can see they've got these little cutouts so when you put them back, you need to make sure that, you can probably see it better from this side, these two holes line up with these two cutouts. So it is just a case of giving them a little squeeze. They're only rubber, so it doesn't matter. So they are designed to deform. Pop them back and then just rotate them round making sure that these holes line up like that when we come to fit it. So there's the first one. Second one. Again, line the holes up. And then finally the two outer ones, which are a lot being shorter, are a lot easier to pop in. Right, they're all in. Now inside the box of bits. the fixing screws and the little securing tabs very important those so let's just fiddle around with this or line everything up see why people use the, the gasket glue it's more to hold the carbs in play much more to hold the air, the trumpets in place than it is anything else they're a little bit fiddly but there we go and 
you can see just in here there is the little brass bit that sticks up through these bottom holes and they obviously need to go through the relevant hole in the trumpet. And now we can screw this down. It's a good idea just to get them all screwed in sort of finger tight to make sure it goes on square and then we'll, we'll talk it all up at the end. When you're fitting these little retaining clips you do tend to find they get a bit bent out of shape so they are literally just there to lock the, the screws in place so it doesn't matter if they are a little bit bent and twisted the important thing is, is that screws go in nice and square And the other thing is, make sure you don't block the hole at the top by putting the, the clip. So they all run this way round. always get one that doesn't want to line up. So I'm going to have a little fiddle and a jiggle with these, make sure everything lines up. And, uh, and then we will move over to the bike and uh, before we can actually fit the carbs, I do need to fit the new throttle cable. So I will see you back at the bike shortly. Okay, before we move over to fitting the new, new throttle cable, one last thing to mention is don't forget to just fold these tabs over. And they are literally just folded over. But the idea is, if these screws somehow work loose, they should stop them jumping out and going down in carbs. And let's be honest, if there's one thing you really don't want, it's your engine swallowing screws because trust me they do a lot of damage I've, uh, I've seen one engine where uh, an airbox screw somehow went down through the car and uh, totally destroyed the top end of the engine before coming out the the crankcase so that for the sake of one little screw that wrote off an entire engine So you can see we've bent all the tabs over just to keep those screws in place. So that's our carbs all done, ready to go back on the bike. And uh, next little job is going to be to fit the new throttle cable. So back to the bike. Okay, so here we are back at the bike. Uh, you can see the throttle housing is actually on the bike at the moment, but it's lacking cables. And that's because I've treated myself to a new 
throttle cable, because let's be honest, why wouldn't you? Now, I'm just gonna run a single cable on this bike, which is just the opening cable. I'm not gonna run the closing cable. The problem is, if you run just the one cable, you've obviously got the cable that goes in here, but just down here, you're left with a big opening in your throttle assembly, just right for sucking in dirt and grit and basically causing your, uh, your throttle to go sticky and possibly jam open. Now, that's the one thing you really don't want. So what I've done is I've taken the old closing cable and I've cut the actual fixing bolt part off. And then I've also been busy with the lathe, turned up a little bobbin, little top hat that just slots inside like this. And that will now seal all that when we close up. Now obviously if you haven't got a lathe, don't worry. You don't have to be quite so sophisticated. Just get yourself a screw and a nut. You can put the screw in, tighten up the nut. And whilst it doesn't look as pretty as, uh, as the little turned bit of aluminium, it does exactly the same job. It seals the end, and more importantly, seals the hole there. So I'm going to take that off, put my little bit of alley in, and then we'll just screw that home. I'll tighten that up with a 14 mil spanner in a minute. But now we need to fit our throttle cable. So, let's undo the housing. Normally it'll be a, a screw on here, uh, but I've replaced them with Allen bolts at some point. Our, our housing and we're just going to feed throttle cable through try and keep my hands out the way and that just screws in Obviously, I will tighten all that up once everything's in position and I know what angle I want that to be at. Also, we've got our mid span adjuster here. So, what I like to do is rather than have it fully closed, because okay, admittedly, a cable is more likely to stretch, what I tend to do is undo it a couple of turns. Before we start that way if when the carbs go on the idle is set too high and I have to lower the idle I can actually put a bit of slack back in the system with that rather than having to go back to the, the actual removing the carbs themselves remove the air box and uh, as you'll see later fiddle around with the adjusters okay so cables hooked in One of those jobs that's almost impossible to do without getting your hands in the way. One thing I would like to do is uh, possibly treat this to a new set of grips as well. These ones are looking a little bit grubby, but that's that's a job for later on in the list. It 
it's something that you can do once the bike is completed. Okay, there's our new throttle fitted. Like I said, I will tighten that up once we've decided exactly where we want that to point. And I will also tighten the bottom one up at the same time. Now, the throttle cable on these takes a ridiculously sharp end. Um, it actually comes in just inside the headstock here. Let's just zoom you out a little bit. So it literally curves around and comes in on the right hand side of the headstock. And there is actually a little recess in the frame that it sits in. Okay. Throttle cable fitted. Okay, so here we are after yet another camera move. Um, and here we can see the, the inlets complete with their bits of rag in. I'm going to leave those in there for a little while. First thing we need to do is we need to replace the carb rubbers. Now these are the original ones and you can probably see they're not in the best of shape. Uh, this one's quite, quite cracked around here. And also they're absolutely rock solid. It's really not worth putting yourself, this one isn't as bad as the others actually. Certainly this one has got no give in it at all. And in fact on some of them, the little sealing lip on the inside just here is a bit deformed. I'm sure on one of them it was actually ripped. Um, yeah, you can see that one, it's actually oval. Um, so what I've done, been on the internet, and I've bought myself four new inlet rubbers. You can still buy the, uh, these inlet rubbers from Honda themselves. Um, they're not exactly cheap, but they're not ridiculously expensive. Um, or alternatively, you can go the cheapskate route and buy this set of four Chinese ones, which will set you back somewhere between 10 and, and 20 pounds. And as you can see, compared to the other ones, they're a lot more flexible, a lot easier to use. Um, these Chinese ones aren't the best. They do work, they do seal quite nicely. Dimensionally, they're a little bit out. So what tends to happen is when you fit the air box, it doesn't always, or the front fixing tab at the front of the air box doesn't always line up with the holes. So for that reason, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the, the inlet rubbers on, tighten up the clamps at the bottom, We'll put the carbs in, then the air box, light, fix the air box in place, and then go around and just tighten up the clamps. Talking of the clamps, I'm gonna reuse the old ones. Um, the only problem is, certainly these bottom ones have ended up a little bit twisted and deformed. So again, you can buy new ones, or alternatively, what I've done is I found an old scrap of steel tube that is just the right diameter. Um, and you can see how out of square it is once it's, it's actually in place. And I'm just going to give that a light dressing with a, with a small hammer just to square it all back up again, hopefully. So if I put it near the edge, quite as good as new but certainly a whole hot lot better than they were and good enough for our needs and compared to removing them from the old inlet rubbers this is a lot easier so we just put them over the end here 
and obviously there are two little tangs here and those two little tangs need to line up with the tang on the actual inlet stub of the head so just push them down get them in place and then it's fun and games trying to get your screwdriver moving them round get the screwdriver in firm pressure holding them down and then tighten them up and repeat as necessary for each one obviously the thing to bear in mind is when you do fit them the clamps for the two on the left hand side of the bike you want the, the screw head facing to the left and then for the two on the right you want them facing to the right so you can access them through the frame so I'll just do this one here place make sure your tabs line up and then just rotate the clamp around a little bit so that your screwdriver can go in and clear the, the elbow for the, uh, the water inlets It's always a good idea just to keep looking down underneath, make sure that they haven't risen up whilst you're fitting them. As I said, the, these are Chinese copies, they're not brilliant. They don't last as long as the, uh, the Honda originals, but you can't really complain too much given the cost of them. Okay, sorry about that. The, uh, the camera obviously got a bit bored and decided to turn itself off. But we're back, it's now time to, to fit the carbs themselves. So here is our bank of carbs, all ready to go. Um, now, it is quite a good idea to, to refit the hose at this point, because there's not a lot of room to do it underneath. But I'm going to actually replace this hose. It's looking a bit cracked and perished and sorry for itself. So uh, I'll do that later. But if, if you're doing it yourself, now would be a good time to fit the hose, run it through, and it's easier to connect it at the pump end than it is to connect it here once the carbs are in situ. Like I said, I'm going to replace it. I haven't got the hose to hand, so I'm just going to have to struggle with that a bit later on. The, the other thing you may notice with the carbs is obviously the, the choke mechanism. Uh, I've got rid of the standard cable and we have just got this little bit of wire that will stick out through underneath the tank through the frame here and we just manually have to hold it on. Again it's one of those things racers do to save a few, a few grams. Does it make a difference? Probably not. Right, let's get the cable fitted. So the cable itself is just going to sit in the rear mount there. Um, but obviously the first thing to do is push it all the way through and hook it in place And what 
will do is once everything's in situ, I'll adjust it up. Now, before we go any further, and it wouldn't be the first time someone's forgotten to do this, now that we know there's very little risk of anything falling down the, the inlet mouths, let's remove the bits of tissue that were in there, stop anything falling down. Um, yes, I have left them in there by mistake when I was in a bit of a hurry and uh, ended up taking the carbs off again because I couldn't figure out why the bike wouldn't start. Okay, um, what have I forgotten? Oh yes, it does also help if you fit the top clamps. Now on the original Honda rubbers you can see they've got a little pit just here and these two little prongs actually sit on there. The Chinese carbs haven't got that. Um, not the end of the world but again it's just one of those areas where the Chinese carbs aren't or the Chinese inlet rubbers aren't quite as good as your original Honda ones. Okay, so now it's just a case of lining everything up. Giving the calves a firm push down, quick check underneath to make sure they are in the right place. there we go so much easier with a new set of rubbers uh, if you are going to reuse the old rubbers uh, you will find they're, they're quite difficult uh, there's a couple of tricks you can use you could try squirting a bit of WD-40 on them which uh, sort of works um, or better still warm them up with the, the hot air paint gun wiring that got snagged underneath the carbs. Okay, yes, so as I was saying, um, if you're reusing the, the old rubbers, you, may, you will find they won't go in anywhere near as easy as that. So you can either put some WD-40 or some, some red rubber grease on the, the inlets rubbers themselves that will help uh, insert the carbs or better still you can actually um, get a hot air gun and warm them up so that will that will also help so now we need to just take out the, the slack in the throttle cable itself and for this we are going to need two spanners For some reason, the throttle cable is binding. So let's see if I can figure out why that is.
And of course, you can't see anything there, can you? So let's just move you up a bit. Interesting. Okay, so these cables are a slinky glide cables, courtesy of Wimoto. happening is that the actual bobbin on the end here so this little bobbin here is actually wider And the inside of the throttle assembly. Which is not a lot of use to anyone. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and get a file and just file off the ends of these just to slim them down a bit. So uh, yeah, not great, not overly impressed. I do have another throttle assembly I'm just going to try that and see if that does the same. The problem with aftermarket parts, they don't always work as well as they should. Here we go. Yep, exactly the same. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go and get a file and I'm just going to file off the outside edges of this just to slim that nipple down a little bit so that the throttle cable will actually work. So uh, I'm going to turn you off and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so I'm back. I've uh, cleaned myself a cup of tea and uh, got the file out and I filed a little bit off each side of the nipple of the throttle cable and as you can see it seems to be a lot smoother so I think we've solved that problem. Also whilst I was having my cup of tea I thought I'd have a look and see if I could figure out why the airbox was sitting so far away from this front mount. And it turned out we had two problems. The first one was the airbox here was just catching the, the radiator hose that comes down from the thermostat housing and connects to the top of the radiator here. So I loosened off the, the clamp at the top here, pushed the hose across, re-tightened up, and that gave me a bit more clearance there. But the other problem, and the most important one, is if you remember from the, the carb rebuilding video, the, the rod that goes along the front of the carbs uh, that actually connects up to the choke plungers has actually got sort of a step in it, it's like a top hat and that top hat is there to clear the cam cover. Now when I'd reassembled the, the carbs I hadn't rotated that round correctly and it was just touching on the carbs, oh, sorry on the cam cover so I loosened off the, the fixing screws, gave it a little twist back, tightened everything back up refitted the carbs and as you can see although it's not perfect it's a lot closer than it was before so I think we're we're heading in the right direction so let's just button up the, uh, the throttle and check that 
that's all working as it should do. It's amazing what just stopping for a cup of tea and a quick sanity check does. Saves you loads of messing around and getting frustrated. So when things don't seem to be working, it never hurts stop for five minutes, have a cup of tea, and just go back and check the obvious things that aren't quite right. Okay, let's have a look. Now that is a lot better. So that's our, our throttle cable sorted. In fact, whilst I'm here, I might as well nip up these retaining nuts. So I'm going to leave this loose because once we get the bike running and set up the carbs, we may have to do a little bit of tweaking just there. Okay, right. Back to the carbs themselves. So I'm just going to zoom you out a bit. Or the old fashioned way. Move the camera back. And like I said, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. So, I'm just going to do final check underneath and make sure the carbs are all sitting flush with the, the top of the inlet rubbers. And then we'll tighten all those up. Side, but I think we can just push down and it now more or less lines up. So here we go. tightened up there. Now it's just a case of fitting the airbox lid and of course the filter. And then just 
jostling it into place to fit that front fixing. on so it is just a case of jiggling and I think I can get that to line up little crankcase breather that just sits in here This is one of those things I should have fitted before fitting the calves. that before the airbox. Okay, well, easily done. Right, so that's it for this video. Um, thanks ever so much for watching. As you can see, we're a little bit closer than we were before. Um, hopefully in the next video, we're just gonna do a quick oil change, top up the coolant, and then we'll see if she runs. So uh, until the next video, thanks for watching, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon.